Hello and welcome to the world of amateur radio. Over the course of the next few videos, we're going to cover all the questions that are on the uh, FCC exam for the technician's license class. <clears throat> for a lot of people, amateur radio is an old technology, uh, but that's kind of a misnomer because uh, a lot of the technologies uh, that uh, amateur radio uses are ad more advanced than even cellular phones. Um, amateur radio operators have been uh, sending data or text messages uh, well before uh, there was even a cell phone. So if, <clears throat> if you're a technology buff and you really like uh, to uh, be ahead of the curve, uh, amateur radio may be a, a place for you. Uh, you can uh, uh, send photos or, or faxes or, uh, you know, whatever, um, you know, further over amateur radio than you can over uh, conventional means. Um, amateur radio is especially useful uh, in emergencies. Um, there's many instances uh, when tornadoes, hurricanes uh, have rendered uh, normal communications uh, worthless and the only people that could still communicate are amateur radio operators. So if you're into emergency preparedness, um, uh, amateur radio is a must for you. Um, and uh, if you're interested in technology, I highly recommend it. So let's get started. So here we go, amateur radio technology class uh, license course uh, for the FCC exam. Uh, we're going to get started uh, by uh, introducing myself. Uh, my name is uh, Gary Stevens. I'm KE2GS. I'm a retired uh, senior technology engineer at Brookhaven National Laboratory. I was formerly a system analyst at NASA's Johnson Space Center. I've been licensed since uh, 2002, and I hold an amateur extra license. What we'll cover in this course and what you need to know for the uh, uh, FCC license exam is you need to know the rules, um, a lot of definitions and uh, descriptions. You need to know operating procedures, uh, radio wave characteristics, properties, uh, amateur radio practices, electrical principles, a little bit of math, uh, some electronic principles like Ohm's Law. Uh, you need to uh, do some, uh, uh, know some electrical components, uh, circuit diagrams, component functions. Uh, we also need to uh, know the fundamental station equipment. A little bit of troubleshooting, basic repair, and uh, how to test your uh, radio equipment. Uh, some modulation modes uh, for your equipment, uh, operating activities, uh, non bose digital modes, uh, some antenna uh, and feed line uh, principles, and also, uh, most importantly, electrical safety, uh, AC power circuits, uh, antenna installations, and RF hazards. One thing I'd like to point out is uh, sort of my presentation format. Uh, anything that is underlined or is in bold indicates that it's information that is on the exam. Uh, so the question number is also indicated. The question number uh, is directly related to the published uh, question pool, uh, and it can also be looked up in the back of uh, your textbook. The question pool that uh, we're covering uh, begins July 1st, 2018 and ends uh, June 30th, 2022. So our goal is to get you a license, um, you know, to be uh, legally uh, authorized to operate an amateur radio transmitter and uh, to be able to handle it in case you need to in an emergency. If this is what you think of ham radio, it uh, just went up in flames. Uh, actually, a ham radio is a device that uh, is used uh, for long distance transmission or uh, communications. Uh, it could be uh, down the street or around the world. 
uh, and in many cases it could also be out of this world. Uh, nobody knows where the word ham radio came from, uh, but amateur radio is both a service and a hobby. It's uh, for non-commercial use, in other words you can't get paid for it, but there is one exception. Uh, if you are a teacher and you uh, are communicating as an incidental part of classroom instruction, uh, say that you're allowing your class or, uh, to talk to the International Space Station, uh, and you're getting paid to do that as a teacher, uh, that is uh, perfectly legal. But you can't use uh, the service uh, for your business or for any profitable uh, enterprise. The purpose of amateur radio is to advance the skill in the technical and communication phases of the radio art. Amateur radio is a personal radio service authorized, regulated, and enforced by the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC. An amateur station is just the equipment uh, used to uh, make a contact. Uh, it's usually a transmitter and a receiver. Uh, with some type of input uh, device such as a key or a microphone. Modern stations include computers, uh, transceivers, and other ancillary equipment such as uh, um, amplifiers uh, to uh, enhance your contact uh, ability. Um, but it can be as simple as a handheld device such as uh, uh, shown in this picture. Um, in the background, you can see someone up on a tower, uh, which is necessary uh, for the more worldly contacts. The modes of operation that uh, amateur uh, operators get to enjoy is a, a phone or voice communications. Uh, there's a, a type called uh, radio teletype. Uh, if you're old enough to remember that there's teletypes that uh, it look, basically look like a typewriter, but it was uh, electronically enhanced to uh, when a person typed on one end, it would uh, repeat it on the other. Uh, there's digital communications or computer-based communication modes that can include uh, data modes like uh, packet and uh, text-only modes like uh, RTTY or radio teletype. Uh, but there are also things like whisper modes, uh, which uh, uh, can go quite a ways. In fact, uh, the interesting thing about digital communications is it actually takes less power to uh, operate uh, than it does for voice communications. And then there's also uh, CW, or uh, Morse code. Uh, CW means uh, continuous wave. And it's a communication mode that uh, is transmitted by either uh, turning off or on a, uh, a transmitter which uh, with a tone. Um, and it's uh, uh, another method uh, for communications for long distance uh, with little power. Now before you can get on the air you need to uh, be licensed and know the rules to operate legally. Uh, the term of an amateur radio license is 10 years, um, and each person may only hold one operator or primary uh, station license grant uh, at a time. The FCC has moved into the digital age, and uh, what this means is uh, that printed copies of a license is no longer required. You don't have to display one at your uh, at your station. Uh, proof of the license or proof of uh, issuance of the license uh, is uh, when it appears in the uh, FCC uh, ULS Consolidated License Database. Uh, it's online and uh, before the course is over we'll, uh, or I'll show you how to uh, uh, access that information. There are three types of licenses currently available from the FCC, and that's uh, technician, or the entry level, uh, the general, and the amateur extra license. The entry level is uh, the choice for uh, most new ham operators. It requires passing an examination of uh, 35 questions uh, on radio theory, regulations, and operating practices, like we discussed. Uh, the license gives uh, access to all the uh, amateur radio frequencies above 30 megahertz, allowing uh, these licensees, or, or you, once you get your license, uh, the ability to communicate uh, locally and uh, 
most uh, often within uh, North America. Uh, it also allows some limited privileges on the HF or high frequency, also known as uh, shortwave bands, um, which is used for international communications. Once you pass uh, your technician uh, license, uh, you're eligible to uh, go for your general class license. Uh, general class license has uh, operating pr uh, privileges on all amateur uh, bands and uh, allows you all operating modes. Uh, it opens the doors to the wide world of communications. Uh, it also requires you to pass a 35 question examination. Uh, and uh, like I said, it uh, requires first passing the technician written examination. With the extra class license, you get uh, all the privileges available for amateur radio. That's uh, all bands and all modes. Uh, but it comes with a price. Uh, earning the license is much more difficult. It requires passing a, a thorough 50-question uh, examination, and uh, you must also have passed the uh, previous, previous uh, license classes, uh, such as the uh, general and the uh, uh, technician. The NATO phonetic uh, alphabet is uh, something that we use to uh, be more concise with our communications. Uh, take my call sign, for example, KE2GS. Uh, if the radio is a little bit noisy, the E could sound like a C or a B or a D, and it can get kind of confusing. Uh, but if I say it uh, phonetically, it's a lot more concise and clear, uh, even during noisy conditions. So KE2GS becomes Kilo Echo 2 Gulf Sierra. So a call sign is uh, kind of your, your radio name or, or your radio alias, if you like to think of it that way. Um, all uh, amateur call signs uh, have a uh, prefix and a suffix. So the prefix indicates the country which the license uh, was issued, and the suffix indicate uh, a specific license within that country. Uh, the prefixes are generally two to three characters and a number, and they're assigned by the ITU, uh, which is the uh, International Telegraph Union. And a suffix is uh, one or more letters, uh, generally uh, no more than three. Call signs in the United States uh, begin with uh, either letter K, N, W, uh, perhaps an AA uh, through an AL. So that would be a a Kilo, a November, a Whiskey, or an Alpha Alpha through Alpha Lima. And there are ten, uh, ten call sign districts uh, in the United States, and they're indicated from a, uh, uh, by a zero to a nine prefix. Uh, so KD5SFQ, for example, would be uh, you know, somewhere in the Midwest. Uh, you know, I, I, my, was my prior call sign, and I received it when I was living in, in Houston, Texas. Um, KD2 uh, or KE2GS, um, you know, you can see is a, is a New York. Uh, and there are also special uh, prefixes for the Pacific and the uh, Caribbean possessions. Now the types of call signs that you'll uh, encounter in the U.S. Um, are, you know, there's basically about six of them. So you have a one by one, uh, which is typically a, a special event call sign, uh, such as uh, W1W or Whiskey One Whiskey. And then there's a one by two, which is a, an example would be a November One Romeo Zulu. Uh, two by one, uh, Kilo Charlie Five Echo. Uh, two by two, KE2GS. Uh, one by three, uh, Kilo One XXX, and a uh, two by three, such as KD Five SFQ. Uh, if you notice, the one is underlined, and again, uh, that implies that that is a test question. So that is the answer to a test question. And here is the actual test question. Uh, K One XXX is a valid call sign for a technician class amateur radio station. Along with uh, call signs, there are uh, 
some indicators that could be added on to the call sign, uh, such as uh, following a slash or a, uh, the word portable. Uh, so the word portable, uh, for example, uh, KE2GS portable, would uh, indicate that I am operating away from uh, my primary location or station location. Um, if I were to say KE2GS mobile uh, or aeronautical mobile or marine mobile, uh, it would indicate that I'm on the move. Um, and then there are some upgrades. So, for example, uh, K, uh, KD5SFQ uh, slash AG uh, would indicate that the uh, operator uh, just uh, passed his uh, general exam and is operating on the general and waiting uh, for it to show up in the uh, online database. In amateur radio, uh, you're allowed to uh, choose your own call sign once you, you have the original call sign. Uh, the first one has to be issued by the FCC, however. Uh, but sort of like uh, Vianna, uh, vanity uh, license plates, uh, you can get a vanity call sign. In fact, KE2GS is a vanity call sign. Uh, my original one, as I pointed out, was uh, KD5SFQ. Um, so it's any desired call sign uh, that's available, and you have to go under certain uh, vanity rules. You're allowed to uh, pick any call sign that's authorized for your class. Uh, for example, uh, technicians can have a 2x3 or a 1x3 call sign. Uh, and you could find out the uh, rules, regulations, and all the particulars for the vanity call signs uh, at uh, www.arrl.org slash vanity hyphen calls hyphen signs. Special event and club call signs uh, can be reserved uh, the ARRL special event uh, call signs. Uh, club uh, call signs uh, must have a valid, uh, you have to have a valid club with at least uh, four members uh, and the uh, applications uh, must be made by the club's trustee um, and the uh, URLs are, are noted on this particular slide. And again, uh, the club must have at least four members uh, before uh, it can be granted a uh, call sign license for the, uh, for the club. And here is the NATO phonetic alphabet um, for those of you that uh, really want to learn it. And I highly encourage you to do it as well as the uh, uh, FCC encourages you to do it as well as others. Uh, for emergencies, it just makes communications a lot more concise and clear, uh, but it's not a requirement. It's just something you're encouraged to do. The ITU is uh, originally the uh, International Telegraph Union. Uh, it's now the International Telecommunication Union. Uh, it's a specialized agency of the United Nations that's responsible for issues that uh, concern information and communications technologies. A beacon station is just a station that transmits uh, for the purpose of observations of uh, propagation and reception that are related to experimental activities. Uh, there are several beacons in the United States and in Europe uh, that help, uh, help us uh, figure out what the band conditions are on any given day. A space station is just what it implies. It's uh, an amateur station that's located more than 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Uh, there's actually amateur stations uh, on board the International Space Station, as well as other satellites that are uh, orbiting around the, uh, uh, the Earth. And anyone holding an amateur uh, technician license or higher is able to make contact with the International Space Station. RACES is a part of the amateur service that provides uh, communications in civil emergencies and uh, uh, many preparedness uh, organizations, emergency managers, offices, and, uh, and the like. Um, so you can uh, check more about the uh, RACES at uh, ARRL's website, uh, but you can uh, tell uh, or read these questions and they are uh, on the exam and you were responsible for 
uh, its content. So uh, give it a glance over, pause if necessary, and then we'll continue. Uh, but it is important to know. So I hope you enjoyed part one of uh, the amateur radio licensing course. Um, I'm trying to keep these uh, sessions down to 30 minutes because I think uh, it's easier for somebody to sit uh, watching a YouTube video for 30 minutes rather than uh, for hours on end. And uh, honestly, this, this uh, particular course um, is, it usually takes uh, about 20 hours to complete. Uh, so we're going to uh, break it up into some bite-sized uh, segments and uh, hopefully uh, it, it will make it more pleasant uh, 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 experience for you to, uh, to learn this. Anyway, um, uh, we'll uh, be posting the uh, uh, other videos and my goal is to go from technician all the way through the extra classes and to get everybody not only on the air, but to the highest license that they uh, desire. Anyway, have a great day or a great evening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, this is uh, KE2GS73. If you like this channel, please subscribe.